Hey fellow lab rats, this is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be discussing platelets. Alrighty, let's get started. Hemostasis is the inherent function of the body that both helps the body to stop bleeding after a short time from injury to prevent extensive loss of blood and also to maintain the blood as a fluid within the blood vessels. The word heme is Greek for blood and stasis means to halt. So hemostasis as a term literally means to halt blood. We don't want our blood to simultaneously clot within our blood vessels, uh, but we do want it to clot and prevent bleeding when we are injured. So this is what hemostasis allows, and it's dependent upon the interaction between blood vessels, platelets, and plasma proteins. Please check out my other lecture video on hemostasis as it goes into much greater detail about the body's coagulation process. This specific lecture focuses on, focuses on one of the components of hemostasis, the platelets. We test platelets in the clinical laboratory included uh, with the complete blood count or CBC. It's run on an EDTA tube, so a lavender tube, which recall cannot be clotted. Uh, results are produced by an automated CBC analyzer. The normal reference range for platelets is 150 to 450 times 10 to the ninth power per liter or 150,000 to 450,000 per microliter. If a patient has an abnormally increased level of platelets, it's called a thrombocytosis. If they have an abnormally decreased platelet level, it's referred to as thrombocytopenia. Just like in red blood cells and white blood cells, platelets are created in the patient's bone marrow. They have the same progenitor cell, which is CFUGEMM, as the myeloid series, which we discuss in our erythrocyte and leukocyte lecture. Uh, platelets also have CFUMK, which ultimately gives rise to precursor cells that become megakaryocytes. The megakaryocyte, uh, which is pictured in this photo on the right-hand side of the slide, is the first morphologically identifiable precursor to the platelet. It's a very large cell with a multi-lobed nucleus. Uh, you can see in this photo, uh, let me show you, kind of like right here and here kind of basically all over this megakaryocyte, um, you can see the platelets kind of pinching off of the megakaryocyte. Uh, platelets are sort of shed off from the megakaryocyte, uh, each one of those producing thousands of platelets. So the progenitor cell, CFUGEMM, differentiates into BFUMK and then CFUNK. This is where it becomes committed to becoming a platelet. The developmental lineage uh, for a platelet or a thrombocyte is as follows. Hematopoietic stem cell, then it becomes a megakaryoblast, then a promegakaryocyte, then a megakaryocyte, which we just saw on uh, the previous slide, and then it becomes a mature thrombocyte, or also called a platelet. And like I said on that previous slide as well, the platelets kind of pinch off of that megakaryocyte. Um, they're cellular fragments of that megakaryocyte, and they don't have any nucleus. The body can increase or decrease the amount of platelets based upon its need. Uh, so if you recall from my erythrocytes lecture, uh, the hormone erythropoietin or EPO uh, causes the body to produce more erythrocytes or red blood cells. Now the hormone thrombopoietin or TPO regulates the production of platelets uh, from the progenitor cell all the way to the release of mature platelets from the marrow into the bloodstream. So EPO controls red blood cells, TPO controls platelets. TPO helps to maintain the bloodstream's number of platelets at a constant, as well as keeps the production of platelets at a constant rate right each day. Of course, the production of platelets can increase or decrease uh, based upon its need. Uh, TPO is produced in the liver, kidneys, and spleen. In patients that have very low counts of platelets, the bone marrow can also produce thrombopoietin to try to increase the patient's platelet count. Now we see the platelets uh, in a right stain peripheral blood smear. So let me take my little laser out here as a platelet. These are platelets all these tiny little purple circular, th these are platelets. Um, <clears throat> so they're very small, as you can see. 
um, and they're, they're around one to four microns in diameter. They are a nucleate, meaning that they have no nucleus present in them. And remember, these are these are fragments that are kind of pinching off from the megakaryocyte and the bone marrow and then going into the peripheral blood. Uh, so there's no nucleus there. Uh, so all the platelet has is cytoplasm. Uh, the platelets stain a light blue to dark purple in color, and there is a centromere and a hylomere. Now, the centromere is located in the center of the platelet, and this is where the granules kind of sort of hang out. Uh, now, the hylomere uh, surrounds the centromere uh, and is like a clear blue in color area uh, with no granulation present. The cytoplasm of the megakaryocyte and the bone marrow uh, develop a, an internal membrane system. Uh, this is called the demarcation membrane system. This helps to maintain communication with the extracellular space and eventually becomes the platelets, uh, which pinch off the megakaryocyte and squeeze out into the peripheral bloodstream. So once they are in the peripheral bloodstream, um, platelets are inert. And this means that they aren't really doing anything. They only activate when a vascular injury occurs. Um, so the, the platelets also repel each other and also repel the lining of the blood vessel. So they're not sticking in to anything. They're just hanging out in the bloodstream waiting for an injury to happen. So they only stick to each other in the lining of blood, uh, the blood vessel when a vascular injury occurs. So when a, plate, uh, a patient is injured, uh, the platelets become activated. Uh, they interact with the damaged vessel wall and work together to form a platelet plug to stop that patient from bleeding. Uh, so make sure to check out my lecture video on hemostasis uh, to uh, learn what part the platelet serves in the coagulation process. I'll go into much greater detail in that presentation. Um, this lecture is just mainly discussing how the platelets are formed, what they look like, how they're tested for uh, in the clinical laboratory. So really quickly here before I end this lecture, I wanted to show you a couple of different pictures uh, showing platelets. Uh, this peripheral blood smear shows a giant platelet, uh, which is right here. You can see with my red laser pointer, that is a giant platelet. Uh, now, large uh, platelets often occur when there is an increase in platelet turnover. So the bloodstream has low platelets in this situation, and the bone marrow is working in overdrive to churn out more platelets to support the body's need. Uh, giant platelets can be seen with uh, genetic issues and certain types of cancer. So that's a giant platelet. These are normal platelets here, as you can see. But that one, that one is a big one. This is a peripheral blood smear that shows platelet clumping. Uh, CBCs are complete blood counts that have uh, platelet clumping. Uh, will also uh, have falsely decreased platelet counts. Uh, sometimes it can be caused by an EDTA phenomenon. So for whatever reason, uh, the endocoagulant causes the platelets to clump together. Uh, so EDTA is in the lavender top tubes, which is what we run uh, complete blood counts on. So obviously we can't report out a platelet count that's falsely decreased. Uh, so in this case, you need to follow your laboratory, uh, wherever you're working, uh, their laboratory's procedure on what to do about platelet clumping. Um, set, some laboratories uh, may have a policy on collecting platelet counts in blue top tubes, so sodium citrate tubes. These are primarily uh, tubes that we run uh, coagulation studies on, um, but these tubes um, can prevent the platelets from clumping um, because there's no EDTA in them. The last slide of this presentation uh, shows a good example of something we call platelet satellitism. Uh, this is when uh, the platelets adhere to neutrophils, giving this like sort of rosette looking appearance. So you can see them how it's just all the way around the, the, um, the neutrophil. So there's not a specific disease that causes this, uh, but it can uh, cause a falsely decreased platelet value on the patient CBC. All right, so that's it for platelets. Um, again, please go ahead and watch my video on hemostasis. I'll link it down in the description. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more educational laboratory content. Until next time.